Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I'm Rex. It's Friday, it's rare, and it's whiskey. Keep going. But where are we drink it? And you can't get it, but we drink it anyway because people are super generous. And the- we, we, We're grateful for that. And if you can get it, then it's not rare where you are. So congratulations. And thanks to- the People who send the whiskeys. Yeah. So I say this without any reservations. <laughs> Yeah. That is quite frankly. <laughs> oh no. The best thing I've ever known. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is actually from the owner of this company who yeah. sent us this. Okay. So he has a vested interest in the whiskey and he sent he sent it, but there's a thing that we do whenever people have a there's a right like it's just a little awkward so we do the Can I make it? Cracker test. Cracker. Cracker test. Okay. Cotton Hollow. What do we know about the this Cotton Hollow? This is Darren Hollow? Lincoln, the owner. Texas Street and Bourbon Whiskey. Darren was super cool. Yeah. He sent the most real information right. of what's actually in these bottles right. from anybody who's ever sent us whiskey as an owner. Okay. Why well, this is like, we know what's in this. Sure. Now, I can only talk about one of them because it turns out their source doesn't like to be named on the other one. So this. Well, tell me. Tell me quietly. Who's this one? <laughs> I have a microphone. There's no such thing as quietly. Just kind of like this. It blocks the it blocks the sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had an answer, but it's so it's so rude. Okay, I can't do it. But you just tell me. No. I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a vault. I'll put it in the vault in the vault. A vault in the vault. It's double vaulted, Daniel. <laughs> Double vaulted, just tell me. It's not Balconis. It's Balconis. <laughs> it's not Balconis. All right, so this is a rye whiskey. Yeah. Right? This is, look at this, so transparent. Yeah. Distilled and aged in Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> Bottled by Cotton Hollow Distilling in Bardstown, Kentucky. So he set up where he needed to bottle in yeah. Kentucky. Okay. But he's based in Texas. He tried to open a distillery here in Texas Wait, for a while. I, well, so there's so many states. I know. So Indiana, I'm assuming the MGP. Yep. Okay. And then he sent it over to Kentucky mm -hmm. because... That's where he set up his bottling company. Everybody. Set it up, bottling company in Kentucky, and then he said he tried to do something in Texas? What's going on? Now, my guess is... Uh, uh, well, so he was trying to start a distillery in Texas, yeah. and he even bought land and spent like six figures trying to get it all figured out. And then the land government people ended up like suing him for not like the utilities people wouldn't let him out. He was like, Fuck this. And he started sourcing and creating interesting whiskeys. Now this one is. So are you telling me with a straight face that there's bureaucracy and governmental heavy handedness that gets in the way? I know. Of people doing whiskey things. What? Anyway, so. Here, uh, smell and try this because we know it's just MGP rye, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's a funny story about this that so, I really love that he told it, us. It's, it's a, the classic MGP rye. It's wildly popular. People love this rye. And, and we we're having conversations um, with, I think you were having conversations with other distillers about mm -hmm. this. The fact that the MGP rye has become um, so... The uh, rye standard. So highly purchased and, mm -hmm. and enjoyed um, and bottled by any number of different brands, independent bottling, what have you. Uh, that it has become the the default flavor set that people attribute to rye as a category. Right. But it's just basically what MGP is doing with rye. Right. And there's a lot of other stuff happening in the rye scene. Yep. It's just people are so used to MGP because it's so, I don't know if pervasive is the word, yeah. but it's so uh, available and common. And there's a reason. It's a beautiful rye. Herbal is the note for me. Herbal so, and spicy. Hey, this tank, I want you to try it. I'm going to tell you the story that you told me. And you said I could tell it. Okay, I got an herbal. I this is supposed to be Rare Whiskey Friday. First impressions. Herbal, spicy, tea. Sweetness in there. Absolutely. Yep. Ooh, that's so dry. Wow. Ooh, the, ooh, there's, wait. The black liquor showed up. Yeah. Halfway through. No. Anyway. Black licorice. <laughs> that's, and then, oh. And then it evolves into like a vanilla. <laughs> 
So, <laughs> goo, 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 goo. so That's the they um, dumped these barrels at 121 proof. Okay. Right? That was 121 when they dumped them. Yeah. They put them into a tank. While they were about to bottle them, a bottle machine broke and they had to order a part. Yeah. So it sat in a tank. 40 gallons dumped into a tank for bottling. Yeah. Sat in a tank. Yeah. They went to go bottle it when the part came in and discovered that the guy who had dumped them into the tank had left the manhole cover off the back of the tank. Oh, you got evaporation. The whole time. You got evaporation. It evaporated down to 101. He said, we didn't proof this to 101. <laughs> it evaporated from 121 to 101. Now, that, hold on. This is a very interesting, very interesting situation because, oh, I would love to do a comparison. What's the difference between this evaporating to 101 versus... And proofing to 101. Yeah. Right? So he said he tasted it thinking, oh, we're screwed. Right. And he liked it. And he's like, screw it. Let's release it. We got it. So... <laughs> we gotta do we gotta do that as an experiment. That's somewhere. gonna be over time, but we can try it. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. test it every day and see how the proof drops. Yeah, and then we then we do a A B comparison of just you know, the down. same whiskey, but proof down with water, yeah. not evaporated down. I'm all for it. Wow. That's a good episode. We can yes. just start it now so that it's ready sure. at a certain point. Sure. Okay. Uh, and then I I get a little bit of oakiness <laughs> after I go back like That's two, what that was my the pizzow look. Pizzow. <laughs> That's what the ending does. It's zesty and dry. Right. It's it's MGP right. Yeah. It's a very popular right for a reason. I kind of like. Uh, I don't really go for the black licorice note. Yeah. But I, I like how the black licorice shifted into like a nice rich vanilla. Right. And then even if it was evaporating for a long time, it's still a relatively high proof. Okay. So this is actual four year old Texas whiskey. Okay. This is the one where we can't say where it came from because the guy he bought it from in Texas uh, doesn't want to. Tell people about it. What I, it's? Uh, I'm gonna guess. Barrel strength, though. So this is ringing in at 157.5%. I'm gonna alcohol. guess. I'm gonna guess. We jokingly said Balcones. This is not about Balcones. Balcones. This is not about Balcones. There's a. Uh, what is your like? Whew, this is like <laughs> distilling. Is it never heard of them? Wait, something. I've never heard of them. Something. Never heard of them. Never heard of them. Are you being for real right now? Never heard of them. Are you being for real? Never heard of them. But I'm just saying. Never heard of them. Are you being for real? We've right? <laughs> never heard of them. Dan, you tell me. Here, you get it on this. We're totally going to have to cut this out of the episode, is Dan. It, is it... <laughs> is it... Still, Dan? I can't tell. Is I've it, never heard of... This is personal space invasion no, on a major look, level. This is privacy. No, you're no. Very, you're very... There's no privacy <laughs> with microphones. <laughs> All right. Dan, black this out. It's... <laughs> Nailed it. Okay, so they Wait, edit out any mention of no, just go beep every time he says beep. <laughs> but but, dude, fucking <laughs> credit where credit. You remember that? I can't believe you remembered that. Right? Yeah. There's a lot of Texas distillers. Yeah, yeah. Met because he was serious about like that guy's gonna be really mad if he sees you guys told anybody. Okay. All right. And that is. Oh, this is funky. Uh, it's like it's a, it's a wood quality, like this yeah. uh, wood burning kit. Is, yeah. is every once in a while we say the character of the smokiness is like a wood burning kit. And this like green molasses, for lack of a better word, green sap molasses. And then uh, this is that char quality that's the dominant note, like that that, that uh, smoky wood element. And then you say the molasses bit. I'm looking mm -hmm. for the sweet molasses, but you say like a green molasses. No, no. Imagine if you, oh, taste it. Woo wee. That is woody. That is a smoky some bitch. Good night. Whew. That almost tastes like it was smoked. Was it? No. That's what? just Texas whiskey. New charred white oak barrels. Did they? That's just corn and Oklahoma rye. Pot distilled. Oh, there's oh. all the rich flavors and yeah. right. And then four years in Texas. Look at the color on that. It's very, very clingy. And there's like a, like almost a caramelized burnt vanilla. Oh, like yeah. Finish. Super charred vanilla. Yeah, yeah. These are these could not be more different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I'm still getting like a green pine, and a green uh, like sappy note mm. buried behind the molasses. Mm. Okay, oh. we got to move on. Oh, oh, yeah, it's the rare whiskey, Freddy. <laughs> yeah. We got two more. From a gentleman that you know, not personally, but because we've drank this whiskey over and over and over and it said his name over and over and over. <coughs> William Shepard, who is now, as of this video, a Titan. Dying in the distance, do you hear that? 
I hear it. Could it be? It is most likely will you. This is Dry Fly, who we've tried before. This is a Washington distillery, right? Okay. And um, they're doing all kinds of interesting stuff. I'm, I'm trying stuff. to remember Dry Fly. I don't, it's... You won't remember it because it didn't, it wasn't bad, but it didn't stand out dramatically. But now even, the question is... Even the name, like, I would think it would remember the name. It's a unique, interesting name. All right, go ahead. Do you want to start with the Triticale? Triticale. Triticale. Tritlacky. Do you want to start with the Trit Lackey whiskey? And it is a four-year-old Trit Lackey whiskey. Tit liquor whiskey. Or, <laughs> Jesus, or the wheat whiskey finished in port barrels. What do you want to start with? Let's start with the Trit, trit liquor. Dan, please. Uh, ooh. I got to tell you a story about it. About that oh, when we're off camera. This is? That's happening right now. This is whoa! What kind of tropical fruit candy is this? Wow. This is that hard pineapple candy. Um, hey, you remember high C? No, no, it's fruit, fruit punch. Okay. Tropical fruit punch. Yeah, it's it's the fruit. Now there's one that's in like the um, what are those hard square candies? Oh, the uh, Starburst. No. They're hard. Oh, they're, the hard square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, the, there's a name for those. Well, I, I'm only. I'm gonna say uh, the tropical fruit punch. Yeah. And then I can totally see some starbursts in here. Yeah, yeah. It's that sweet and fruity and wow, like dramatic. artificial candy. Like, yeah. Can honestly, I'm not a candy guy, uh, but what this is those? a unique, interesting nose. That's if that's coming from the triticale grain. Wow, that's a whole nother frontier in the world of whiskey flavors that I don't think has been fully uh, explored. Jolly Rancher. Oh, the Jolly Rancher. What kind of Jolly Rancher are you throwing down? Fruit. Fruit Punch. There's a Fruit Punch? I think there's something like that. Like if Fruit Punch was a Jolly Rancher. Hard candy and like generic yeah. Fruit Punch. Yeah, yeah. Like we should be drinking this out of a little foil pouch with a yellow straw. No, we really should. <laughs> Pop! And every bit of like sugary sweetness that you were expecting from the nose. Oh yeah. Shows up on the taste. And then it shows up on the finish. Here's the thing with the triticale so far. Is this 100% triticale? Yeah, the up. Uh, Four years? Mm-hmm. It's 100%? I don't know if it's 100% okay. triticale, but. Triticale. The thing that is striking to me is it's a unique flavor. I enjoy the, fl the flavor. Mm -hmm. Very sweet flavor. But this whiskey, um, it doesn't really like switch it up and unfold and evolve. It's not like multi layers no. of things going on. The layer that's in there is really nice. I like it, and I think it could be a beautiful, beautiful flavor to show up in um, uh, some some more whiskeys. The Triticale, wow, who knew? But I think this is simple but really nice. Oh, you pinch your your yeah your the hand meat. the little fat oh, that, hand, that was you, uncomfortable. You got your hand meat squished. I did. I can see the line starting to form right there of the hand, blood blister. It's the hand meat. Okay, so uh, the next one is a wheat whiskey finished in port casks. Basically everything I said? Yeah, absolutely. Done. Okay. Port casks, okay. Mm, so wheat nope. whiskey yeah. finished in port cask. Okay, interesting. And this is it here? Yeah. Wow, they're going for the sweets. They're going for the they sweet really notes. They really are. They're going for the sweet notes. This is a softer, more, more of a red wine-like sweetness. The fact that it's port finished does not surprise me. Wait, I'm gonna need 
a little more air on that. No, you got the same amount. I, no, I, I did a short pour. I, but I need, I need air. No, you've got all this whiskey around you. You don't need more of this. But air. There we go. There is this like... See, this feels like a more natural sweetness. Yeah, like it feels more like a plum or... Yeah. Like a darker, in, in, um, and again, like the red wine kind of fruitiness, mm -hmm. as opposed to like, you know, candy, a tropical fruitiness in this trit triticale. Um, I feel like this has got to be like a ruby port. If they're doing a port, this is like a big fruit heavy port. And there is a slight color difference. I mean, they're, they're very different whiskeys. This is a little bit darker, quite possibly from the port cask that just added that red, rich flavor. That's Still, weird. Still sweet, but comparatively, no, it's, it's more dry. It's way more dry in the end. Yeah. I was expecting this just to be a candy bomb, but... And it finishes even more dry than the, the, the initial... Yeah, approach. it keeps sucking moisture out of my tongue. Mmm. That's bizarre. Don't do that. It doesn't give you extra flavor. <laughs> Duly noted, because that's what was stopping me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the potential loss of flavor. <laughs> I'm trying this one again because there's got to be more. Oh, there is. Yeah. Well, you start to get, um, there's like an herbal quality to that. Oh, wow, it is. A little bit of um, like, a, like a dry eucalyptus. It's grassy, dry. You, see, your grassy note, I think, is, is your very eucalyptus? akin my, to my eucalyptus note. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And the sweetness, yeah. it stays back. So as everything keeps changing and lingering on the on, around my tongue, yeah. it's in the back of my throat that that sugar note is just kind of lingering around. I gotta tell you, I like them both. Mm. This was very intriguing to me. Yeah, I prefer Very interesting to me. Very interesting to me, like tropical fruit note, the triticale. Mm -hmm. like, man, I think that needs to make more, have more of a presence in the world of whiskey, because I think based on this, it has a lot of interesting stuff to offer if a lot of interesting stuff is synonymous with some tropical fruit notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, this, I have had things similar to this several times before, but this, yeah. is, this is actually a little bit more of a complex whiskey than this is. To be fair, this, is, this has more layers going on than the triticale thing. It's just the triticale thing was a special little who knew kind of whiskey. Even though it's more simpler, damn, I like that tropical note. Damn! Damn, y'all. Yeah. Anything else? I wish that I could try it at a higher proof to see if the watering it down left the lingering dry notes. All right, once more. Into the breach. Mmm. And then I'm starting to get some red grape skins in there. Yeah. And I may be projecting that because I know it's like a port cat. Do you regularly eat just the skins of grapes? No, but you see, you like you eat the grapes. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You eat the <laughs> grapes and you eat all like the sweet, juicy bits. And then you're left with like the skinny bits, <laughs> and then you don't want to spit them out. And that's just rude. And then you just you kind of go through and you power through. Really? How long do you chew your grapes? <laughs> like, a, like a normal, non-serial killer amount of time. <laughs> <laughs> Here's to fighting steal your drink. Yeah, <laughs> Why should that be Why like was that so funny? I think this is a common you, thread of serial killers. <laughs> They're just in the corner gnawing grape skins. Getting more and more murder. <laughs> That's what I'm picturing. <laughs> I'm picturing it puts the lotion on skin, pops a grape into his mouth from a handful of grapes. Apparently, Reservatol is this yeah. grape skin thing. Yeah. It's given birth to countless murderers. <laughs> good for your heart. If you fight me, you fight for a friend. But also good for murder. <laughs> steal may you steal your liver's heart. And if you drink, may you, you drink, drink with us. us.